الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم إن شاء الله we're going to continue from where we left off and we are studying together an extremely important topic and that is الإرث inheritance and inheritance is a very important science that every Muslim, male and female, must learn and study it thoroughly. So with us is this tremendous work by this senior scholar, our elder and our em his eminence, Sheikh Saleh bin Fouzan al Fouzan, may Allah preserve him. So the Sheikh, he divided the heirs into three categories. And remember this. When it comes to the heirs, there are three categories of heirs. The first category, Ashab al-Furud. Ashab al-Furud. Ashab al-Furud are those who have a specific share in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned their share in the Quran. Like, like who? The son, no, the son Allah did not mention. No. The son is from the second category. The daughter, yes. How much is her share? Half of the son. Half if? There's a brother. Like she gets half when? There's no brother. There is no, she doesn't have a brother with her. Right? Okay, or a sister. Okay. طيب. Let me give you an example. A man passes away. He leaves a daughter and a son. How much is inheritance? Son gets two percent. Gets two shares. Two shares and daughter gets one share. Yes. He gets two shares. She gets one share. So, for example. If it's $150,000, the son gets how much? $100,000. $100,000, and she gets $50,000. $50, Very good. Tayyip. <clears throat> so, the daughter is from Ashab al Furud. Who else? Husbands. The parents also. Ahsant. The parents. Okay, now, the parents. How much do they get? One sixth, in case there are children. children. So, but if there are if there are no children, they get more than that. Yes. They get one third. They get one third. طيب. And who else is from the those the, that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned their share in the Quran? The, the, the husband and wife. The husband. And wife. And the Sheikh is going to talk about them now. But before we go into what the Sheikh here is saying, remember we spoke about the spouses. So, how much does a man get from his wife? His wife passes away and she leaves a husband, she leaves a son. He gets one fourth and the son gets the rest, right? He gets the rest. Okay, if, the, if he leaves, if she leaves a daughter and husband, how much is, does he get? She gets one half because she's from Calcutta. Yes, and he gets how much? He gets, uh, he gets one fourth. One fourth. Because there's children. Yes, and if there is anything left, who, who takes it? The closest male. Who is the closest male here? The husband. The husband. Okay, now... So we say that the, the husband, either he gets one half in case there are no children. And he gets one fourth if there are kids. If they have kids, he gets one fourth. Now, what about the zawja, the wife? So a man dies, he leaves a wife. And he leaves a daughter. How much does the daughter get? One eighth. 
the daughter. One, 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 half. one half. She gets a nisf. Yes. One half. Because she is there. Yes. Right? So how much does her mother get? One eight. One eight. If there are two women, two wives, the man had two wives. Yeah, they, they share one eight. Mm -hmm. But if they have no kids, how much do they share? One fourth. fourth. It's very important for the, for the sisters also to know. Tayyip. The Sheikh, he said, the husband inherits one half the estate. If the deceased wife does not have a child, male or female, even if from another husband. Okay, what does he mean by that? If she has the children. From Not from him. But it's from another, from husband. another husband. Like for example, a man, he marries a woman and she has kids. Those are his what? His Stepchildren. Yes. Those are his step Stepchildren. Children, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now if their mom dies, of course she was married to this man. This is not their father, right? He has his own children. Now, he can inherit from her, but because now she has kids, he cannot get one half. He can, how much does he get? One fourth. One fourth. Yep, one fourth. Tayyip. The Sheikh, he said, or a grandchild, or a grand child by her son by her son let's say she doesn't have a son but she has a grandson okay now the grandson she leaves a husband and a grandson how much does the the, the husband get no 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 the husband the husband does not get blocked at all. Okay. So, <clears throat> how much does he get? Okay. Half? One eighth. Ikhwan. Is it the same? The same because Brothers. The grandson as the son. Think, think, yeah. think well. Yes. Think well. The oh. husband. We're talking about the husband. Okay, the husband, how much, how much does he inherit if they don't have any kids? Oh. How much? You just said it. One half. One, One half. half. Yes. Now there is, there, is, there is a grandson involved here. One fourth. Yes. Ah. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Because grandson of the son. Yes, but if the son w was there, he will, he, he will block what? The grandson. The grandson. He will block the grandson. طيب. The Sheikh he said, the husband inherits one fourth if the deceased wife has a child or a grand child by her son by her son means grandson to illustrate Allah exalted be he says in Surah Nisa and for you is half of what your wives leave if they have no child they have no child you, you, you get how much one half but if they have a child for you is one fourth of what they leave after any bequest, the bequest is al-wasiya. Like this woman before she dies, she has a wasiya, she has a will for someone. Like a very close friend of hers, or she wants to give it to charity, right? Something like that. How much can she give? Less than one third. One third or less? Yes. One third? Or less. She cannot give more than one third. She cannot give more than one third. Unless there is a consent among the heirs. Like they are pleased with it. They don't have no problem with it. Then it's okay. But it's not permissible to give more than one third. طيب. That is al wasiya And then you have a dain. A dain is debt. So this has to be taken care of before they sure. distribute. Before they distribute this estate. And the debts are two types. Either it is the debt 
that has to do with the human beings, your fellow Muslims, like someone, he borrowed money from him and he has to give it back to him. Something like that. Or it has to do with the rights of Allah. Like Hajj, Umrah, Zakat, his Zakat was due, or the like. Now, the Shaykh said, the wife or the wives together inherit one fourth of the estate if the deceased has been does not have a child, male or female, it doesn't matter. So if a man leaves three wives behind and he doesn't have no children, then all of them they inherit how much? One fourth. But if they have children, they have like a son or a daughter or something like that, then it is one eighth for all of them. They all of them share it. Tayyip. <coughs> The Sheikh said, if the husband doesn't have a child, male or female, even if from other wife, another wife, even if the, the children are from another wife, because that's their father, they inherit from him. طيب. Or grandchild by his son. She and the wives together inherit one eight. So all the wives they, they inherit one eight. If the deceased husband has a child or a grandchild by his son, by his son. To illustrate, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and for them, i.e., the wives, is one fourth if you leave no child. But if you leave a child, then for them is one eighth of what you leave. After any bequest, wasiya, you may have made or debt. So if the man leaves a wasiya, a bequest, then it has to be fulfilled. But the debt comes first. The debt comes first. <coughs> Then the Shaykh, now we understand the, the inheritance of the spouses, right? Yeah. Everybody, anyone has a question on this? Fadda. Uh, no. Fadda, fadda. Fadda. If the wife has a grandson, but the grandson is uh, through her daughter, and the daughter has passed away. So does that grandson hold the same position as if she had a, a grandson to her son who had passed away. It's not clear. Can you, can so, you... Uh... So uh, the wife has, uh, the wife had a, a daughter, daughter and from... Uh, uh, with, with the husband. With the, with the same husband. With the same husband. Okay. And uh, that daughter had a son. Mm -hmm. Does that son uh, and, the, and the daughter die? So the son... Uh, does that son have the same no. position as if it was to the no. son? No, no, he doesn't. Okay. He doesn't. What What is that son's position? Okay, that one he will not inherit. He will not inherit. No, mm -hmm. who will inherit the <clears throat> the son, the the grandson, right? The grandson through the daughter. Through the daughter. Yes. yes. That's the one who inherits. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, and another question. If the man died and he leaves grandson and daughter. Grandson and daughter. Yes. He, he leaves a grandson and he leaves a daughter. Yes. Okay. The, the grandson, he, he does not get blocked here. <coughs> he does not get blocked. So he will take two thirds and Yes, and, 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 the, and, and the daughter, no, the daughter will get half. Daughter will get half? Oh, uh, grandson, from, from, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. He gets, okay, they split it together. They split it together. No, because the dakari had al-untayayn. Because he's, he's a male, 
the grandson. Yeah. So the grandson, Why? he inherits double share. Double share, yes. Because his father is not there. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. So he inherits. Yeah. yeah, he can inherit. Yes. Why? Why? The Sheikh, he said, the inheritance of the fathers and paternal grandfathers. The father of the deceased on the paternal or the paternal grandfather. In case the father is dead, because if the father is, is there, he will be blocked. He will be blocked. So the, the, the grandfather will be blocked. Likewise, the mother blocks the grandmother. Yes. Mm-hmm. So the father of the deceased on, or the paternal grandfather, in case the father is dead, is entitled to inherit one-sixth, a sudus, one-sixth of the state as prescribed share if the deceased has a son or grandson by his son. By his Son. In other words, if it was not his, then he will not be blocked. But he will not be blocked. But if it is a grandson by his daughter, then the daughter uh, will count, uh, the granddaughter will move up to contact his daughter and she will get one half. Yes. Okay. Right. Tayyip. The Sheikh said, this is because Allah exalted me, he says. And for one's parents, to each one of them is a sixth of his estate. If he left children. So in case there are children, they get, both of them, they get one sixth. These are the grandparents. They get one sixth. But they get one sixth on two, with two conditions. The first one, the presence of children. The second one, what? We just mentioned that now. No, we're talking about the, about the grandparents. No spouse. No? no? Spouse, wife. Or yes, because they block them. Okay, now the mother blocks the grandma and the son blocks his father. Right. So there are two conditions. Right? Then they will get one sixth. Tayyip. The Sheikh said, the father of the deceased or the paternal grandfather, in case the father is dead, and that's why the Sheikh said, in case the father is dead, because if he was there, he will block him. <clears throat> Inherits only by virtue of Agnation. What does agnation mean? Anybody knows? This is a very difficult word, right? But I know what it means in Arabic. So I will be able to explain that to you. Okay, now, inheritance, what did we say, is three types. You have inheritance that is specific. Allah gave the share of specific people in the Quran. Like, for example, the daughter gets half. The husband gets half. The sister, the full sister, gets half. Right? طيب. In case there are no? Sons. Yes. And the daughter, the daughter get, if there are two daughters, then how much do they get? Two thirds. Two thirds. Jazakallah khair. Yes. They get two thirds. So there are certain factors that affect the share of the inheritance. So now, agnation, he means those who don't have a specific share in the Quran. Al-Asaba. They call it Al-Asaba. Al-Asaba are those who don't have a specific share in the Quran. So what do they do? After those that have a specific share, take their share, they take the rest. I'll give you an example. A man dies, he leaves a wife, he leaves a son, and he leaves a daughter, and he leaves a brother. 
Okay? He leaves a wife, a son, a daughter, and a brother. Okay, I'm going to go in order. How much does the wife get? One eight because the, of the presence of yes, the children. The, the child. Yes, the children. Okay. Now, the full brother, does he get anything? No. Ah, uh, why? The son is there. The son is there. He blocks him. He blocks him. Tayyip, what about if it was a full sister? Same thing. He same thing. He blocks him. You see, and that's why the ulama they say the strongest of the warata of the heirs are the son. Number one, he is number one. Subhanallah. And the reason Allah gives double to the to the son, look at the hikmah, the wisdom behind it. Because the son bears the responsibility of the household. So he's the one that makes sure that his wife or his wives have a shelter, have a place where they can go to. They have a house, they have food on the table, they have clothes, they have everything they need. You know? Okay, so I have, I have two brothers. We're a total of three boys. Yes. Um, obviously my uncles aren't going to get anything. They will not get. So. Uh, because your uncles are ashab, ulul uh, arham. They're called Ulul Arham. They are blood relations. And the blood relations they don't inherit in the presence of both of the first category. Those who have specific shares, or ascendant and descendant. They cannot inherit anything. So will the three of us divide equally? Yes, okay. yes, absolutely. And your uh, uncles will be uh, blocked. No, you get Unless there's a wasiya. <laughs> Sorry, but that's the way it is. Maybe there's a wasiya somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to give them a gift. Yeah, yeah. That's another thing. That way they don't feel bad. You, yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. you know, they're going to feel bad. You know, but, but that's the law of Allah subhanahu right, wa ta'ala. Right, you know? right. Yeah. <laughs> it happens a lot. Yeah. It happens a lot. So just to, you know, you give them a little bit. <laughs> You know, just uh, as a gift. Tell them this is a gift from me. Yeah. That way they don't feel bad, you know. Okay. The Sheikh said, <clears throat> the father of the deceased or the paternal grandfather, in case of the father is dead, inherits only by virtue of agnation. If the deceased has no child. So what the Sheikh is saying here, like we're talking about the grandfather. He has a share in the Quran. How much is his share? With kids, one six. One six with kids. But if there were no uh, son, no sons there. No sons. For example, there, there is the grandpa and the daughter. Right? The grandpa and the daughter. So how do we divide it? She will take half. And he will take one sixth plus the rest. Yes. You get it. Wow. This is called agnation. This is called ta'sib. Hear it with ta'sib. Ta'sib, what did we say? They don't have a, sh they don't have a specific share. Mm. You, know, you, you understand? So they inherit the rest. So now the... the, the the father of the deceased, he inherits with al-fard, with al-fard, because Allah has given him a specific share, one-sixth, and he also, he inherits with ta'seed, means he takes the rest, you get it, in case there are no sons. Either daughter or wife, yeah? No, the daughter, he inherits with the daughter, and he takes the rest. But with the son, he cannot do that. Yeah. Also, with the wife, wife will take. Uh, yeah, with the wife, the same thing. Of course, he will take the risk. Yes, if there are no, no, uh, no, no, kids. no kids. Like, okay, that's that's a good question. Now, a man dies, leaves a wife, and leaves a father. How much does the wife get? A quarter. One fourth. Okay. 
Then what, how much does the father get? He gets the rest. He gets to, uh, he share one six and the rest. You get it. <coughs> okay. But uh, now. So what if uh, the father had uh, the the son died? Right? The son died. So the, so the grandfather, his father is there. He, yes, he but inherits. He also had another brother, like um, the deceased had an older brother. Does the older brother blocks him? Blocks the, the grandfather. Father. Yeah, he blocks his father. Mm. So he had two children, yeah. two sons. Yeah, one died. One died. one died and one still there. He cannot inherit. He blocks him. The father. So he takes the place. Yes, yes. The closest male. The, the closest, closest male to the deceased is the one that inherits. Yes. Because the Prophet he said, فَمَا بَقِيَّ فَلِأَوْلَى رَجُلٍ دَكَرٍ Whatever is left goes to the closest male relative. And the closest male relative is the son. So the, uh, the, the uncle will be blocked. Right? And the grandfather also will be blocked. He cannot take anything. Because his son, the son blocks the father. Sheikh, he is a question you can answer it or delay it. Yeah. He, he is shukha here in this country. Yes. That, why? Mayor? Gets double. Yes. And it's specifically here in this country, this question. Yeah. Because uh, the al kuffar the disbelievers, they don't understand the intent of the legislator. Because there is something, there is a, there is a, a science in the Sharia. It's called maqasid al-sharia. Maqasid sharia The intent of the legislator. The wisdom behind that law. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he decreed that law for a reason. And like what we discussed earlier, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives double to the male because the male has more responsibility than the female. He is the household, he is the, the head of the household. And he has to provide for his family. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah An-Nisa, Al-Rijalu qawwamuna ala nisa Men are the maintainers, are the providers of the women. So if that's the case, then doesn't he deserve to, to have more or less? Even yes. unmarried, unmarried daughter, even he is responsible yes. for it. Yes, exactly. She married? Yes, she that's it. Will be, to will be on, uh, oh, yes, over her husband. husband. Now, the daughter, when she gets married, where does she go? She goes to her husband's house. He takes good care of her. And he's responsible for her. He has to provide for her and the like. If she has a business, for example, that's her money. He cannot touch it. Look at Islam. Allahu Akbar. He cannot touch even if she is wealthy. If she, even if she is wealthy. It's not permissible for, for the husband to take from her wealth unless she willingly give it to him. Like some of the people because they've been westernized. Oh, we're going to go 50-50. There's no 50-50 in Islam. <laughs> Subhanallah. Yes, you hear that. 50-50. And then a woman takes her husband to court and she wants to take 50 of his estate. Subhanallah, this is not, this is not Islam. This is dhulm. This is pure oppression. Mm -hmm. Where well, you're going to take what doesn't belong to you. Mm -hmm. Subhanallah, you want to take half of the house which he purchased with his own money and sweat. Subhanallah. You're going to take it from him? Subhanallah. Bashar put this rule. Subhanallah. Allah this rule. Yes. Which is better. Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. Yes. yes. Whatever is yours is yours. Yeah. Nobody should come and say, no, give me half of your... Uh, Subhanallah, it's yours. It's dhulm. وَلَا حَوْلَ وَلَا قُوَةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ طيب. The Shaykh he said, the father of the deceased or the paternal grandfather in case the father is dead inherits only by virtue of ag agnation, tasi, as we mentioned, he takes the rest. <laughs> If, if the deceased has no child, has no child, or, or a grandchild by his son. So when he says a child, no child, he doesn't mean the daughter. He means the son. He means the son. Because the daughter 
takes her share, which is what? Half. And then the grandpa, he takes the rest. He takes one-sixth, which is his, and he takes by way of agnation, which is ta'sib, he takes the rest. Is that clear? No. Things start making sense to you, right? Alhamdulillah, good. But inshallah, when we finish this chapter, I'm going to give you a test. I'm going to give a test to all of you. And inshallah, those that pass the test, they're going to get a certificate of achievement. <laughs> inshallah, bi Certificate only? Yeah. <laughs> only, yeah. It's a good, it's a we need some, something else. Some, no, we will, I, I will talk to the administration. Maybe they have something for you. <laughs> Maybe some gift or something like that, inshallah. Okay. The Sheikh he said, this is accor according to the noble verse that states, but if he had no children and the parents alone inherit from him, then for his mother is one third. His mother gets one third. And the father gets what? He did not mention him here. So it means he gets the rest. He gets, and plus we have the hadith. We have the hadith, whoever, whatever is left goes to the closest male relative to the deceased. And in this case, the closest is the, the father because the son is not there. No. But if the son was there, that would be a different story. Can you repeat that last sentence about the one third? One, one third? Yeah. Okay. Now, repeat the verse? Yes. Please. Okay. And if he had no children... If he had no children and the parents alone inherit from him, then his mother, then for his mother is one third. So she gets one sixth in case kids. there are kids. Mm -hmm. If there are no kids, she gets yeah. one third. And the, father gets the father gets the rest. If they are alone, they don't have any, nobody with them. Okay, what about the uncles and the aunts? They are blocked. Completely. Even if we have brother also, but brother. He, he gets blocked. Yeah. Because remember this, Ikhwan. When it comes to priority, when it comes to priority, when it, in terms of inheritance, the first one that has the most priorities, the ulama, they say, al bunuwa, al bunuwa, sonship. Number one. Okay, those are the closest to the deceased. <clears throat> Number two, al ubuwa fatherhood. Okay? Then the third one, al ukhuwa brotherhood. Then the fourth one, al umuma uncles. So this is the categories. Amen. Huh? Oh, males. males yeah. Yes. But remember the Sharia. Subhanallah. This Sharia is amazing. Wallahi, wallahi. When you think about it, when you reflect sometimes, you look at the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's just amazing. Beyond our intellect. Mm -hmm. Wallahi. When you, when you look at the maqasid, the, the intent of the legislator, there is a book by Al Imam Shatibi, rahimahullah. It's called Al Muwafaqat. Remember this book. Al-Muwafaqat by Imam Shatibi. And he mentioned the intent of the legislator. Like, there are certain laws. Allah did not tell us why he made those laws. He did not wish to tell us the wisdom behind. But there are some, subhanAllah, he told us why. Right? And even those that he did not tell us, the scholars... They look at them and they reflect upon them. Like Imam Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, when he speaks about this matter, you'll be shocked. Subhanallah, when he speaks about it. It's just amazing. Amazing. Al Muwafaqat, Imam Shatibi, rahimahullah. And also, Al Imam Ibn Qayyim, he has a book called I'lam al Muwaqi'in al Rabbil Alameen. This is a book that deals with Usul al Fatwa, the, the principles of Fatwa. And also, he speaks about the intent of the legislator. Very important to know. Maqasid al-Sharia. 
Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, for example, uh, prohibit a shirk, for example? And when you look at Tawheed, the opposite of shirk, you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to establish Tawheed. And if we do, then we will have security in this world and we'll be guided and we will have security in the next world and we'll be guided to Al-Jannah. But the opposite is true. Al-Shirk wal billah. When you look at all a nations, how Allah destroyed them. Al-Imam Al-Qayyim rahimahullah, has, he has a very beautiful work. It's called Shu'm al Masiyah. The, the evil effect of the sin. And he mentioned how Allah destroyed those nations before us because of sins. And that's why Al-Fudayb ibn Iyad, rahimahullah, he said, إِنِّي لَأَجِدُ شُؤْمَ الْمَعْصِيَةِ فِي خُلُقِ مْرَأَةِ وَدَابَةِ Subhanallah. Al-Fudayb ibn Iyad, rahimahullah, he said, I experienced the evil effect of sin in the behavior of my wife and the behavior of my riding beast. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanallah protect us. The Shaykh said, In this verse, Allah exalted be He, entitled the inheritance to both parents. The mother inherits one third of the estate, whereas the share of the father is not defined. Ah, he's not defined. Here, Allah did not define the share of the father. He mentioned only the mother one third. Right? Therefore, the father gets whatever remains by the, of the estate by virtue of agnation. Ta'sib. So now we know that the, 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 the grandfather, the father and the grandfather, not only do they inherit by al fard that they have a specific share in the Quran, right? But also they inherit the rest in case there are no sons. In case there are no sons. Tayyip. The Shaykh said, the father or the paternal grandfather, in case one, in case the father is dead, inherits by virtue of both. Prescribed share and agnation. If the deceased has a daughter, or granddaughter by his son. Uh -huh. You understand this? Now, I'll give you an example. The deceased dies, he leaves a father. And he leaves a daughter behind. Uh, he leaves a father and daughter. How much does the daughter get? Oh. One half. And then the rest goes to who? Uh -huh. now, let's say the, the, the daughter was not there. The, she's, she died. Her daughter was there. Right? Her daughter. The granddaughter was there. Same thing. Is that clear? Is that clear? But if the deceased leaves a son, leaves a son behind, so what happened to the father? He's blocked. He's blocked. Very good. What about the grandson? He's blocked. Too. Blocked. The same, same thing. Right? The Shaykh, he said, the Prophet wasallam said, give the share of the inheritance prescribed in the Quran to those who are entitled to receive them. Those who are entitled to receive them. Now, then whatever remains should be given to the closest male relative of the deceased. Because when you look at it, what did we say? Those that has the most priority are the sons. Then after the sons, the fathers. Then after the fathers comes? Brothers. No, the brothers. Then after the brothers comes? Uncles. uncles. Like if there are none of those except the uncles, what happened? The uncles get they, they inherit. Agnation. They inherit by agnation, yes. Yeah, you get it. Alika Noor, mashallah. Very good. The Shaykh said, Hafidahullah Ta'ala, this is to say the rest of the inheritance goes to the closest male. Closest. 
closest male relative of the de deceased, namely the father, who is considered the closest male after the son and the grandson. After the son and the grandson. In other words, if the, grand, if the son and the grandson were there, he would be blocked. Are you? The Sheikh he said to sum up. He says, the Sheikh is giving you the summary, right? The sum up. The father has three cases. Okay, memorize this or write it down. It has three cases. The first case, the father inherits only by virtue of prescribed share. If the deceased has a son or grandson by his son and so forth in the descending lineage. You get it? Yeah. So now, as, as you have noticed here, the sheikh is talking about who? The males only. He did, not talk, he did not talk about the females. Why? If it is a daughter that he left. She's category one. So she, what happened? She, has her. she doesn't she block him. Yes. She does not block him. And what does, how much does he inherit? The rest. The rest. Ah, you see. It's very important to know. When he's blocked, when he's not blocked. Sometimes... He is, his, his inheritance is reduced. Reduced. This is called Hajb Nuqsan. Hajb Nuqsan. When there is the reduction in the share. Okay? He, get, he gets one sixth. If there are kids, there are kids there. Ayyub. The Sheikh said, the first, I'm going to repeat it. The father inherits only by virtue of prescribed share. If the deceased has a son or grandson by his son, so forth in a descending lineage. So that's the first case. Second, the father inherits only by virtue of agnation. In case the deceased has no son, or grandson by his son and so forth in a descending lineage. Okay, now a man dies, he leaves a father only. Okay, or he leaves a father and a mother. Okay, how much does the mother get? One third. One third and then the rest goes? To the father. So now he inherits by way of what? Agnation. You get it? Tayyip. The third, the father inherits by virtue of both. Of both. Prescribed share and agnation. In case the deceased has a daughter or granddaughter of his son. Granddaughter of his son. Can anybody summarize these three for us? Anybody can su summarize this? So there are three cases. The first case? He gets it uh, according to... To the shares in the Quran, the which is one-sixth. One -sixth. In case? Uh, in case of their uh, children. Children. Second, second scenario? The second scenario is both. He gets the uh, prescribed shares in case of... That's the third. Uh, that's the third. The, the, the second one? The second one is... He, he inherits by way of what? Agnation. And ah. the last is both. Right, right. And then the third one, he inherits both by, by both. By prescribed share that Allah has given him in the Quran, mm -hmm. plus the rest. He gets the rest of the inheritance. Very good, mashallah. The Sheikh, he said, the paternal grandfather is the same as the father. In the above three cases, as mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah, in case the father is dead. So meaning that the father and the grandfather, they have the same shares, same inheritance. Father and the grandfather, they're the same. طيب. However, the paternal grandfather has an additional fourth case. I'm 
Okay, this we have to pay attention to this. Okay, the paternal grandfather, the paternal. Ayyub. The Sheikh said has an uh, the, the paternal grandfather has an additional fourth case, namely if the deceased has four brothers, has four brothers, or had brothers from the father's side, from the father's side, have two different opinions in this regard. So there are two opinions among the scholars on this regard. When it comes to the paternal grandfather. <clears throat> the first opinion is that the paternal grandfather of the deceased equally shares the estate with the deceased brothers without preventing them from receiving their share. This is the opinion of the other scholars. Because there are two opinions of the scholars. There are those that say he blocks them. Mm-hmm. And this is the madhab of Imam Ahmed. Rahimahullah. And there are those that say he does not, they don't get blocked. You get it? They don't get blocked. But Wallahu alam, the most correct opinion is the first one that they get blocked. Because he takes the same position as the father. Al-Jid is the same. The, grand, the, the grandfather takes the same position as the father. Because he is the father. Yes, the exactly. The yes. Tayyip. And they all equally share the remaining estate by virtue of agnation, according to certain known rules in this regard. This opinion is based on the fact that the paternal grandfather and the brothers of the deceased are equally agnate relatives of the deceased father who is already dead. The deceased paternal grandfather is his father and the deceased brothers are his sons. Therefore, the deceased paternal grandfather and the deceased brothers share together the estate and the paternal grandfather is to be treated as any one of them regarding inheritance. So now it depends on the country too. Because certain countries, they may follow this opinion. So when you maintain by Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, and it is one of the opinion reported to have been adopted by Imam Ahmed. Moreover, this opinion is the one maintained by Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah ibn Al-Qayyim and Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab. May Allah have mercy on them. They have based their opinion 